What's up everyone? Got another video for you today, a little bit different than grass related, but one of these tools that is super handy to have in the garage that I use for pretty much everything from air tools, impact drivers, and impact wrenches, blowout tools, blow guns, things like that. This is the Harbor Freight Central Pneumatic brand. That's Harbor Freight's house brand of air compressors. This one I've had for about three years now. It's been running great. I'm going to give you a little bit of advice on how to make these things run forever. So it's been a pretty reliable unit for me. Some people are hit or miss with these things, but honestly, there's just a couple of things you need to know to keep this thing running properly for a really long time. Starting off right away, we've got this air filter. It just twists off. So this should get changed, or at least blown out and cleaned, I would say every six months to a year, depending on how much you use it. There should be no dirt inside there. That looks perfectly clean, which is good. We'll go ahead and secure that back on there. The main thing with these electric motors is that you don't want dirt or particles to get mixed into the piston, which is on top here. Now, I just had this running for about four and a half minutes, so it's filled all the way up to 125 PSI. The top here is nice and hot. You can only touch it for a second before you burn your hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the oil in this today. Now when I first got this unit, I changed it. I ran it for about 30 seconds, drain the oil. And then I ran it again for about five minutes, drain the oil again. And each time I did that, there was some metal particulates that were floating in the suspension and the oil. So you want to get that flushed out in a new motor immediately before you use this long term. So since I did that, I probably flushed about four or five times a full oil change each. And now that I've had it for a couple of years, I've been changing it every few years and make sure you check to make sure the oil level is proper. So it should be between that red bulb there. There is an oil filler top right here. You just unscrew this, that's how you put your fresh oil in. To drain it, you need a number two Phillips head screwdriver, which you just be very careful with undoing this because you can strip it out easily. So you wanna get a proper fitting screwdriver, not a cheap screwdriver, and apply inward pressure as you turn gently because otherwise you'll strip this head, it's really cheap. So just be careful with that, be mindful just to not over torque this. You just want it just a little bit tight enough that it doesn't leak. You don't wanna super torque it. So having said that, I'm going to show you the type of oil that I use for it. When I first got this air compressor, I got the cheap stuff from Harbor Freight, and I flushed, like I said, four or five times using the cheap stuff. I would fill it up, drain it, fill it up, drain it, like five or six times after just running it for five minutes each. I used up a lot of it. This is just really cheap oil. I mean, it does the job. It works. But what you really want for a better longevity is full synthetic air compressor oil. I got this from Home Depot. This is the Husky brand. It's uh, just a full synthetic, a little bit smaller bottle. It's 16 ounces as opposed to 32. It's quite a bit more expensive than this stuff, but you only have to change it like every few months, depending on how heavy your duty cycle is. I don't use my air compressor much, so I change it about every six months. So it also helps if you have cold weather. Under 40 degrees, this stuff, the motor doesn't like to start up because that thing draws about 14 amps, so it's pretty much a full load on a 15 amp circuit breaker at 120 volts. This stuff keeps the viscosity more consistent at lower temperatures, so that's what you want to use. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. We're going to drain this into an oil pan and refill it. So go ahead and get comfortable before you start draining because it takes a while for that stuff to come out, which is why I ran it for a little bit so it's hot. First thing we want to do is vent the top, so just loosen the plug on the top. And like I said, push in on the screwdriver as you turn. And I just kind of jiggle it back and forth till it starts loosening up. Get your oil pan ready to go. And there is a gasket on there, so make sure you catch that. Okay. 
Hopefully you can see that on camera that it's draining. It's not super dirty, but I haven't changed it in a while, so... Oh, there's a little bit of particles in it, I can tell. So the next thing you're going to want to do, put your screwdriver down. Don't lose that little guy. Hang on to it. That's the plug. We're going to tip it. Tip it back. So that way the oil flows better. And you're going to want to hold it here for a few minutes until it just starts dripping slowly and then you know that it's all out. And I like to rock it back and forth once it reaches the end just to make sure you get all the remaining oil out for a full flush. Okay, it's done dripping. I have a paper towel on hand because it gets messy once in a while. I'll just kind of wipe that up. Wipe up the extra drips, hand thread it, so you're not crossing threads and stripping the hole and making it worse. I like to hand tighten as far as it'll go. I'll show you how tight to make this. That's it. Maybe just snug just a little bit. until it stops spinning without hardly any force. I'm putting like five foot-pounds of torque on there. I mean, it's just enough to snug it up because I want to be able to back it out again without it getting stuck. See that? It's just, it's still moving the screw. Just enough to compress that washer under there so it doesn't leak. That's it. Now, if you want to know how much oil this thing takes, I looked in the manual, it takes 5.6 fluid ounces, or 165 milliliters, SAE 30 weight, non-detergent air compressor oil. This is the original bottle that it came with. I marked a line with how much oil I should put in there. So I'm going to transfer the oil from this bottle into this bottle and use it as a measurement, and then I'm going to take this and pour it in. It's best to use a little mini funnel if you got one, but otherwise just pour carefully. It's a small bottle and I don't have it totally full, so I can do it like this. You see how this synthetic flows quite a bit smoother? It's a lot more viscous, and it, as in thinner oil, than the cheap stuff. That is what allows it to start easier in the cold. So not as much resistance on the piston. So now, I'm going to check our level on the bubble. I didn't quite fill this all the way, so... We're going to add just a little bit more. Make sure that the feeder level and the tires are on. Make sure it's on a level surface when you do this, so that way you get an accurate reading. Add just a tiny bit more. Look again, and if you have to look straight on at this, at perpendicular to it, to get an accurate reading. If you look at it above or below, your perception is going to be off, so you want to make sure you get the right amount. So I'm looking at it dead on. 4.4, 4.4. And we're right in the center. There we go. Perfect. Screw the cap on. Tighten it down by hand until it stops. Not super tight. It's plastic, so you don't want to like cross the threads or anything. Just make it tight. And that's it. There you go. That is how you change your oil in an air compressor. If you do this on a regular basis before the oil gets dirty, this is cheap insurance, guys. Do it. Keeps your equipment running for longer. This is, I paid 150 bucks for this, and you know what? It's served me for three years now. I hope I get another three years out of it. As long as I keep taking good care of it. So there you go. If you guys got any questions, leave a comment below. Give this video a thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have a good one.